This is Carlisle's Picks with a news break regarding a fatal accident with a with the autopilot mode on a Tesla car. So this is Joshua Brown. His uh, YouTube channel link should be in the description, also in the comment section. Uh, John Brown was the, apparently some technician working for Tesla. He was doing some extensive testing on the Tesla autopilot features. He has a lot of videos on his channel testing various modes, the capabilities and the limitations of the, of the autopilot system. Recently, he was um, running the car apparently on autopilot mode and ended up in a fatal accident. There was uh, the truck driver that I believe was involved in the accident claimed that he was watching a Harry Potter film during the time of the accident. There are people who are questioning how can the truck driver be able to uh, see that kind of information. I mean, you're driving a truck. How are you seeing you know, into this guy's car and watching the screen and, and long enough to identify you know, exactly what film he's watching. I mean, seeing that he's watching some kind of video is one thing, but the level of detail to identify the specific film, people are questioning that. But the fact remains is that uh, Mr. Brown, Mr. Joshua Brown is now uh, dead and the accident looks like it is due to some kind of failure or inadequacy of the autopilot system. There's also questions being made about um, his driving habits. I, I, I took a look at some of the videos, I didn't see anything to match some of the claims that are being made. Maybe I haven't seen the right video yet, but um, that is something that is being brought up. So, obviously people are going to be thinking, you know, hey, you know, this, this just shows how dangerous this stuff is and why we shouldn't have these cars driving by themselves. So this accident happened on, on uh, July 1st, 2016. Here's some more details on the crash. As you can see, they're saying the car was driving this way and this tractor trailer turned right in front of it. So obviously, for this type of scenario, the car would have had to have been capable of detecting and recognizing this vehicle turning in front of it. That's a little bit challenging. I mean, it's a truck, so it wouldn't have turned that fast, but at what point in time would the system be capable of identifying a turn? So the car, I can see, can easily detect, okay, there's another vehicle, there's another vehicle, there's another vehicle. Now, does it see the wheels turning? I'm not aware of what the technology capabilities are, but is it looking at wheels turning? Is it looking at, um, can it see the lines in the other lane and see that the truck is crossing those lines? Can it see perspective changes that don't match a truck that's moving straight? The way the truck should look, or most vehicles should look, that are going in a straight line that are passing by would not match a turning vehicle. As a vehicle turns, the perspective in terms of the way the car sees the, the, um, the truck would, would change to match that. So the, the front bumper, instead of going this way, would be would start to turn this way and perhaps it can see stuff like that so i'm not aware but that that seems to me to be a very challenging thing because remember it's not only detecting the, the, the turn in truck but it's also uh detecting it in time to react because if the truck really turns like the way this line is i mean you you don't really have necessarily much time to react to it now the difference between the computer and a human, now, I don't know if it can detect a signal because I was thinking, how, how would we avoid this accident? Well, hopefully this truck actually signals, so we would see the flashing yellow, so we would know it's going to turn before it even makes any move to turn. So we don't need to see any physical movement of turning to know that, hey, there's a truck that's about to turn, so you know we need to slow down or whatever. Um, additionally, I, I think we can also, we have other cues, we can see the driver turning his head a lot and we can see him slowing down and maybe he's edging towards the side of the lane. There's a lot of little cues, you know, for a defensive driver to pick up on to help. So, Because sometimes these drivers don't signal, right? Also, just the fact of, of the truck being there, um, you know, a defensive driver would, 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 seeing that the truck is there and seeing that there is a, a road here for the truck to turn onto, a defensive driver would consider, you know, um, that that potential threat and you would pay attention to the truck so you're more alert uh as a computer now 
you know, the computer would have the ability and capability to be constantly scanning everything all the time. So rather than identifying the specific threat based on the truck and the turn, it would be capable of constantly always checking everything regardless of whether there's a turn there or not. But however, the early warning signs of a turning truck, I don't, I don't see what the, what the computer is going to do to be able to, to, to detect that um, really quickly. But again, I, I admit my ignorance of the technology. I do not know uh, the capabilities and, and, and how it exactly works. But this, in fact, is what happened. So supposedly, truck turned in front of it, car hit it, ran off the road, and it hit a power pole. I'm not sure exactly what killed the driver, but um, you know, was it the impact from here, you know, breaking his neck or, or losing the fire? There's some information here about how the technology works. So it says here the crash avoidance system is designed to engage only when the radar and computer vision systems agree that there is an obstacle according to an industry executive with direct knowledge of the system. It's got forward radar, reflected microwaves can identify location and speed but not always type and nearby not not always type of nearby vehicles. So it can identify location and speed, but not always type. So in theory, what this computer could detect, just, just common sense. If you're looking at the speed of a vehicle, and I assume that, it, that includes a vehicle that is an oncoming vehicle, then you should mathematically be able to ascertain the fact that the vehicle is slowing down, which would be a major red flag about you know, what the next move of that vehicle is. Why would a vehicle be slowing down on a road like that? I mean, a human could figure out that, that he's probably gonna turn. A uh, computer should be able to figure that out as well. They could definitely program that into the system so that it knows, well, hey, this truck is slowing down on a road like this. Unless there's gotta be something funky, pay much attention to this, uh, this truck. Perhaps uh, do some preemptive moves in terms of slowing down in anticipation of what's next. But that's definitely, that could be an indication of something uh, or something that to trick, to tell the system to you know, be aware. Forward facing camera in processing software can detect lane, strip, sign, stop sites, road signs, and, and other objects. Ultrasonic sensors reflected sound wave detect distance to nearby objects. Combined with a high precision mapping, GPS determines the car's position on the road. So this, the ultrasonic sensor is in conjunction with the forward radar could definitely help in this scenario because if the ultrasonic sensors can detect the distance to nearby objects and that's probably partly how it's detecting the speed you look at the the closure rate which is a rate of which the vehicle is is, is um, getting closer and closer to you to your position if the vehicle speeds up the closure rate is going to increase so it's going to be getting closer and closer, faster and faster. If it slows down, the closure rate would decrease. So logically, you can detect the vehicle slowing down, which again would be a, an indicator of a potential turn, uh, a definitely a potential threat, because you know vehicles don't just randomly slow down in the middle of the road for no reason. So any competent programmer would definitely ha have to put something in the system where it detects that. So you have this ability to check, uh, detect uh, uh, changing closure rate. You also have the ability to detect speed. And again, th these may work in, in conjunction because you can easily detect speed based on, on knowing um, the changes in distance over time. So I'm not sure how it does that the speed, but if the Ford radar is detecting speed on its own, then again, you can also see the truck slowing down, which is another indication that it's gonna turn. So I think these two systems are probably would be primarily uh, relevant to this type of system so anyway you guys go ahead and comment below let me know what you think about this I know that the thing about this people are gonna say you know oh this is dangerous you know wow you see it's already happening someone died you know I don't want to be on the road with with some computer driving a car um, I don't know man which would you which would you uh so you feel safe driving on the road with people that are texting and drunk and it didn't have enough sleep and, and generally incompetent but you're worried about a computer that may have uh, a potential failure no, no system is perfect I don't know I mean I, I'd want to think that the computer might be more reliable and more consistent than a human being 
right? I mean, obviously there's dangers involved in, in any new technology. That's, that's just the fact of life. I mean, cars in general, when they invented cars, I mean, you have this big thing, you know, weighing thousands and thousands of pounds driving around the road. And, um, you know, you're, you're giving it to people who, you know, it's, it's all new and, you know, people have different sensibilities and different skills and all this kind of stuff. You know, are, are you putting a loaded weapon in the hands of people uh, that maybe shouldn't have it? You know what I mean? Like that's that would be the whole dilemma of, of, you know, the first vehicles. You know, this is dangerous. This is scary. How can you give people the power to, to just go out and buy something like this that they can just run over someone, you know, run over somebody's kids? Right, but uh, clearly uh, the the automotive industry um, has been a huge success, and we have vehicles all over the place. But uh, initially, there would have been the uh, the fear and concern, and now we have automatic driving vehicles. So here we go again. You know what what's this this is going to be all about? We have we already have trains that drive themselves, right? We have planes that fly themselves, and the planes are capable of landing and take off. I don't believe we do that yet, but we do have the capabilities. We definitely have the capabilities to fly automatic. You have autopilot, and that's 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 nothing new. That's been around for a while, and so pretty much most people who would sit here and, and complain and like, oh, this is dangerous or whatever, you've probably already, you know, flown in a plane that was being flown by a computer. So you've already been in an automatic thing. Now, obviously, it's a little bit different because you have a trained pilot, you know, who's there. But hey, this guy was uh, a, an engineer working for the the um, Tesla I believe and um, and correct me if I'm wrong on that uh, that that's my understanding is that he was a technician but um, still there was an accident so same thing with the pilots you have the pilots in the plane with the autopilot but um, that doesn't mean that it's foolproof you know what I mean it, but 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 uh, bottom line is I want you guys to comment below and let me know what you guys think about this you know what do you think about this accident what do you think about you know, the possibility of having a bunch of cars on the road driving automatically, people watching movies and you know, all kinds of stuff on the road, but they're doing this because, or they're able to do this because, not because they're like driving with their knees, but because the computer's driving the car. Anyway, this is Carlisle's Picks, and uh, I know I haven't done many, many videos in a while, but um, we are getting back in action pretty soon. Stay tuned for the um, you know, the exciting new chapter of Carlisle's Picks and all my other channels, your fast life, motorcycle channels, car channels, uh, my tech channel. Everything is going to be getting back um, into action pretty soon, but we're going to have to take things to a whole different level. So stay tuned. This is Carlisle's Picks.